How's it going? So today on Big House Sport, we have just finished up Origin Series 2021. Obviously, massive congratulations to the New South Wales Blues, who are the victors after a stellar performance in Game 1 and stellar performance in Game 2. Obviously, Game 3, the Queenslanders did win, and uh, it was a nice little effort there from the Maroons to hold out the Blues, and especially when they were pumping and pumping and pumping in that last 10 minutes. But the Queenslanders did win Game 3, prevented the sweep in Queensland, and they'll take it. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll take it. But overall, for Queensland, it was a pretty terrible series. But today, guys, as you you can see here on the screen, we are going to be doing a tier maker of all the players who played in Origin this season. Now, I'm not too sure if anyone is missing right now besides Moses, who I've notably seen is not on here, unfortunately. So I'll kind of go through later on and I'll just explain where I would have put Moses. He only played the one game, but... We'll talk about that one. In this video, guys, we're going to be ranking all the Origin players, and we've got Elite, Big Impact, did the job, not that great, won't be back in 2022, or not enough game time. Now, obviously, a lot of these Blues players are going to be upper end here. A lot of them are going to be upper end, but let's get straight into it, and let's start talking about Origin Series 2021. Alrighty, so first up here, we have Josh Adokar. Now, obviously, the Blues were fantastic this year, had a lot of tries in them in the first couple of games. He had a couple of tries as well, but overall, I don't think they actually utilize him as much as you would expect. I think that with Josh Adokar, he was good this year, but he kind of got out shunned because the Blues attacked so well down either side, and they just chose to go out the side of Bryant O instead in game one and two. And yes, he still got a couple of tries, but look, I think he did his job. I think he did his job. I just don't think he had the same kind of impact simply because he didn't get enough of the ball in comparison to your like your Bryant O on the other side. And it was still good. He definitely wasn't in not great. But he did his job, and he did his job just fine. And you could argue big impact, but I don't think he had the greatest of impacts on this Origin series specifically. Next up here, we've got Giant Arrow. Hmm. Yeah, look, uh, <laughs> I'm going to, look, I, I want to put him in here for his stupid shit that he did. Uh, <laughs> I want to put him there. You know what? Because of that, I'm actually going to just simply put him in not that great. He's going here because when he was on the field in game one and two, I didn't really think he did an effective job as it was. Now, look, obviously... Queensland, no one really had great games in game one and two, except for one player who we'll get into, but Jairo for me just really wasn't there for me, and obviously that game three absence because of his inept ability to not... No, we're not going to get into that. But look, I'm putting Jairo in not that great. Didn't have an impact on the series at all. Wasn't exactly fantastic in game one and two. And better luck next year. Alrighty, moving on. AJ Brimson. Now, I love AJ. You know, I'm a Titans fan. I would love to see him do well. I personally think the reason why I'm going to put him in not that great this year is because, unfortunately, the series didn't really suit him in where he was placed. You know, he was thrown all over the shop. He was on the bench and came off and got put into the centers. He did a pretty reasonable job there with Trebojevic because Hamiso Tabawafido had to go out to the wing and then uh, who actually did pretty well there. But, you know, AJ is a great player and I think that he definitely, like last year, he had a big impact on the series. But unfortunately this year, it just didn't suit him where he was being put into his positions and injuries. It was, it was a difficult one for him. So I'll go not great. He's definitely going to be back in 2022. He's a fantastic player, AJ. But unfortunately this series, he just didn't really do too well there. Alrighty, next up, this is Kurt Catewell. Now, I'm going to put him in do the job. I'm going to put him in do did his job because although he was out of position, I still think he did a reasonably fine effort. I still think he did his best for those first two games and still made a few meters despite being in the centers when he's not a center. Now, game three, he was in the back row and I thought he did pretty well there. So I think he did his job. I wouldn't really complain overall with Catewell and you can't really complain considering he was in a position that is not where he usually goes. Thanks, Paul Green. Cherry Evans. Ooh, okay, Cherry Evans for the Queenslanders. Definitely going to unfortunately go in not that great. I'm going to put him there as well. He's definitely on the lower end. He is one of the best players in the world when he wants to be, right? That's why he's on so much money at Manly. That's why he's at origin level. That's why he plays Kangaroos. It probably won't happen at the end of this year now for obvious reasons with Nathan Cleary. Gary Evans has to go on not that great. He wasn't impactful. He, he was okay in game three, but I didn't really think that he was the main reason Queensland won game three. I thought that, you know, he was there and he's, his leadership skills, okay. We'll see how, did, did it really go well? I don't know. Obviously, game one and two were pretty lackluster, so... You know, he is the captain. He is also responsible for the mentorship and the leadership. Didn't really do a great deal of that. So I'm going to put him in not that great, unfortunately. Next up, Nathan Cleary. Now, look, you know what? I'm going to put him in elite. I'm going to put him in elite. But I actually think that 
You know, I'm actually going to put him in... No, I'll put him in Elite. I'll put him in Elite, simply because, obviously, they lost Game 3 when he wasn't there. I think Cleary absolutely was unreal this year, but I think that he got outshunned by his partner. I did. I think I, I think I really think that Jerome Lua outshunned him, and we'll get to him in a second, but Nathan Cleary's the best halfback in the game right now. Best halfback in the game. Absolutely. You know, he definitely deserves to be in that number seven role for the Kangaroos at the end of the year for the World Cup, right? But obviously, he didn't play Game 3, and Game 1 and 2... I think he was probably an eight and a half uh, in the regards to rankings specifically. I don't know. I feel like he's definitely up around a big impact, but I put him in elite simply because he was still fantastic and we'll chuck him in there. Alrighty, next up, Xavier Coates. <sighs> I'm going to put him in not great. I'm, I'm not going to put him... I'm not going to put him in do the job because I don't really think he did the job. Like, I think he tried and I think that unfortunately he was... I think he was a little better in game two than game one and game three. He did try his best. And I think that obviously this kid has so much potential and I'm looking forward to seeing more from him. But unfortunately, you know, when you're getting pumped by like 50 points in game one and you are part of the reason, as in your side defense was part of the reason why you did get pumped by that margin, unfortunately, you're going to go and not that great. And although he tried and did okay in game three, he didn't really get a great deal of ball, but I can't really complain with his game three. But overall... It wasn't that great. And of course, guys, when the series eventuated the way it did, you're going to see a lot of Maroons probably, probably down this way. Damien Cook, I thought he had a big impact. I thought he was actually quite underrated in regards to Blues this year. I think because they had such a stellar performance in Game 1 and 2, and I thought, think because they were so good overall with a lot of their outside backs and just their playmaking skills, that Damien Cook kind of took a back seat to how well he probably played. So I'm going to say big impact, and you can't be good in today's game without a quality hooker. You just can't because they need to be playing the ball quickly, get the ball rolling, and that's exactly what he did. So Damien Cook, you are in big impact. Crichton, okay. For me, I personally... And I know this may... I'm going to put him... I'm going to put him in not that great. I didn't think that he was... I didn't think he was as impactful as you probably want from Crichton. Probably didn't play a great deal of minutes either, to be honest with you. He came off the bench a couple of times, I believe. Ah, uh, I don't know. Like, did he do his job? I don't think so. Like, I, I, I think that he was one of the more lackluster players of the Blues this year. I definitely think we'll see him back in 2022. Don't get me wrong. I'm not having a crack at him at all, but I'm just thinking that I don't think he was the most impactful. And I, I think that he had a couple of mistakes in him throughout the series that probably puts him down here for me. So, yeah, unfortunately, I'll be putting in not great. All right, Tano Fasa Malawi from the Maroons. I'm actually going to put him, especially after last night, I thought he was very good last night, I'm going to put him in did his job. I think with inexperience was probably his main factor there for not being a big impact. I think last night, if you were going to refer to State of Origin Game 3 specifically, I put him in big impact. But I don't think overall he did a great deal throughout those first two games and had a few mistakes in him. But I'm going to put him into his job because he is a young bloke. He doesn't have the experience and yet still put it all out there, still gave it a crack. And I still think he was probably one of the, the better players than Rones last night too. So I'll put him in do the job. Next up, Kyle Felt. Look, I'm sorry, lads. Sorry, lads, but... He's not going to be back in 2022. You know, he's just he's just simply not. Unfortunately, Kyle Fell isn't an origin player. He is a very good winger for the Cowboys and has done his job over the time for the Cowboys. And you definitely say big impact in regards to Kyle Fell, especially with his uh, domestic team, his uh, NRL team. But yeah, it, we're not going to get too much into it because it's been very well publicized in regards to Kyle Felt in regards to game two. But we'll put him in, won't be back in 2022. Alrighty, Bryant O. Oh, I'm going to put him at the top end of big impact. I'm going to put him at the top end because I don't think he had the most fantastic game three. And I think that, you know, this guy... Actually, you know what? I'm going to go elite. I'm going to go elite. I think that his runs to cover for the forwards to give him a bit of, you know, time to get some breath going again and, and to uh, to suck in the deep ones. Brian Joe would come in, he'd make meters. You know, he would make... In that game one, he was unbelievable. He was absolutely unbelievable in game one. So you really have to say that he was one of the elite players in Origin this year for me. Yes, he was a bit susceptible under the high ball, which was what everyone knew coming into this series. But I still think he was an elite player in the series, and I think he was the, probably the best winger, definitely the best winger across all four in the series. Alrighty, David Fafita. I don't think he... I don't... I'm going to put him... I'm going to put him in... Not, he didn't obviously play game three because he was suspended. I don't think he was unbelievable. I obviously think he's got an absolutely massive future and it's going to be awesome to see him, you know, really grow with this team. And he is a fantastic forward, but 
I don't think that I have a good enough read about him from this year. I could even put him in not enough game time, but he played enough time for me to get a read of not having a fantastic series. The more he grows, he's young, just like Fasa Malawi. The more he grows, the, the better he'll become. But for this year, 2021, I'm going to chuck him in. Not that great. All right, Dane Gagai. <laughs> I... This is the tough one. This is the toughest one of the lot so far. Reason being is because although his defense was absolutely horrific this year, he still gave it a massive crack in regards to attack. I'm going to put him in not great, but I'm going to put him at the top end of not that great simply because I would, if it was for his defense, I'd put him in won't be back in 2022. His defense was horrific. His defense was just disgustingly bad, right? But I think that he is still one of the better players for Queensland and... I think that he really improved in the second half in game three. And attacking wise, he still provided a threat. So yeah, I'm going to put Dan Gago at the top of not that great, but it is still not that great. Alrighty, Harry Grant. Unfortunately, I'm going to put him in not enough game time. Harry Grant didn't really get a great deal of game time this year. Queensland had two, three hookers actually. They had McCulloch in game two, and then they had Benny Hunt in game three. Now, yeah, look, Harry Grant, he's been injured quite a bit this year, and he just hasn't been able to have that real solid stint that you'd be wanting. I'd probably put him in, I guess, big impact if he played the whole series, but yeah, not enough game time, unfortunately. All right, Payne Haas, this is definitely... Oh, is that... Did I grab Payne? No, I didn't grab Payne Haas. Payne Haas, I'm putting him in massive, big impact. I think coming off the bench, he was fantastic. I think he really pumped those legs strong and, and really made a good, solid meters. I think Payne Haas was one of the better players for the Blues this year, despite obviously coming off the bench, and obviously, you know, he is one of the best forwards the competition, so congratulations to him. He has been, he was unreal, in my opinion. I thought he was unreal. Next up, I think this is Liam Martin. I think he did the job. You know, I think he did the job. I don't think he did anything special. Um, you could argue that he was not that great, to be honest. With. Actually, to be honest, I'll put him at the top end and not that great, because I don't think he did a great deal memorable for me. You know, he'd come on and I guess you'd see him make a tackle or two, but you, you wouldn't see a memorable stint. Like, he... I don't even know if he'll be back in 2022, to be completely honest with you. I don't think that I'd rate him and won't be back in 2022, simply because that's kind of saying you had a really poor origin. And I don't think he had a really poor origin, but I just don't think he was as impactful or got the credit due to the fact that he had such a good back line. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just didn't really have to. Next up, we move into, I believe this is Cohen Hess. I hope this is Cohen Hess. I can't really see, and it's not really recognized by me. So if this is not Cohen Hess, I do sincerely apologize, but I'm going to be putting him in not enough game time. He didn't really play enough game time, and that's why I don't even really recognize him, to be honest with you. But yeah, not enough game time. Nothing more to say there. All right, Valentine Holmes. I'm going to be putting him in not great, and I'm going to put him above Cherry Evans, but I'm going to put him... I'm going to put him there. I'm going to put him above Jai Arrow and Cherry Evans and underneath Xavier Coates. I think that Valentine Holmes obviously was majority of the time fullback this year, first game and second game, and just that's not his position. You know, I don't know why the Cowboys are persisting with him. I don't know why he really wants to be a fullback when realistically he is the best winger in the competition on his day. You know, he was the best winger back in 2016 with the Sharks, and he's a very good winger, and he was showing really good signs in the first half last night before he got injured in game three. So, Look, I think that if he plays wing, he goes and do the job or even big impacts throughout the series. But unfortunately, yeah, at fullback, he's definitely in the not that great section. And if you want to argue in regards to fullback position, he'd be and won't be back in 2022 because he will not be back in 2022 fullback wise. But he definitely will be back in 2022 on the wing. But for this year, not that great. Definitely not. Benny Hunt, I'm going to put him absolutely here. You know why? Because I think that Ben Hunt this series was just so underrated, especially that game three. He was literally the best player on the field across both teams. He was unbelievable. You know, Ben Hunt, I have major criticism of him, not because of 2015, just because I have major criticism of him. He's had a fantastic year with the Dragons. You know, he came in for the Maroons in game three, arguably won them the game. Game two came off the bench and, and still did pretty well there. You know, I'm going to put him in a big impact because he was a big impact for the Maroons. He was a big impact and arguably won them the game in game three. Well, he scored two tries, didn't he? So... He's definitely a big impact. You know what? I'm actually going to put him above Payne Haas. I think that, yeah, Ben Hunt had a fantastic origin series, and hopefully next year he gets a bit more game time. But uh, we move on now. We go to Fleece Kafusi. Oh, this is a tough one. I think that he would be... I think he had a relatively... I thought Game 3 was okay. I'm going to put him in, in not great. I'm going to put him below Gagai. Reason being is because I think Kafusi had a bit of impact in him when he made his runs, but in the same sense, wasn't a 
massive amount of impact as much as you would expect with Kafusi, who's one of the better forwards in the competition at the Storm. Uh, unfortunately for me, yeah, I'm going to put him in not that great this series, but we definitely will be seeing him back next year. He's a phenomenal player. Next up, we got Api Korsau. I'm going to put him in not enough game time. He came on for a little bit last night, did score a try to be honest with you, but overall didn't really have anywhere near enough game time to make his mark on the Origin Series in 2021. Simple as that. Fantastic player though. Mawaki Fodawaka, I am going to throw him in Elite. Yes, I'm going to throw him in Elite. Mawaki Fodawaka was probably the surprise package for Queensland this year. Had a great game one, didn't really have a fantastic game two, but was probably still one of the better Maroons in game two. And then game three was there just like usual. He was the best player for the series throughout Origin for Queensland. He was absolutely the best player for Queensland throughout the series. As a Titans fan, I love that. Yeah, in his first game, he was the best on the field for Queensland in a massive 50-point drubbing. In the third game, he was probably second best to Benny Hunt. So, fantastic series for Mikey Fodawaka, and you've really got to commend him on showing through despite being off the bench, where I think his best position actually is off the bench to give that super sub impact kind of deal. All right, Jerome Luai, you have to put him in elite. Uh, you'd have to put him, I would put him above, well, I, I've got to put him above Cleary. I'm going to put him above Cleary because I personally believe that Luai had the most effect on this Blues team this year. Now, look, Cleary has that. I guess, head about him and, and leadership skills about him to direct the play around the park. But you also need that enigmatic kind of 5-8 that just moves and grooves around the field and just kind of got, finds those nooks and crannies and, and gets some randomness about the game. And that's exactly what Luai does. But his randomness is not really random. It's quality. But he doesn't even know necessarily what he's doing, let alone the other team. So he's absolutely elite. I thought he was probably... Well, he definitely was one of the best players on the field in the first two games and obviously didn't play game three. And you saw the lack of leadership and, you know, versatility with no Cleary and Luai in game three, which obviously won the game for the Maroons. All right, Andrew McCulloch. Look, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't think he was terrible in game two. That was the only game he played. But overall, he's not going to be back in 2022. You know, he's, he's, he's not going to be back in 2022. It just, he doesn't work the origin scenario. It's just not his kind of deal. Unfortunately, he's like felt where he can be a, you know, quality player in the NRL. But unfortunately, it's just not his kind of gig in regards to origin. So I'm going to put him in won't be back in 2022. Because I just don't think he will be, especially with the likes of Harry Grant there and Reid Marnie and, 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 you know, Benny Hunt having such a good game. I'm sorry, but unfortunately, he won't be back. All right, Latrell Mitchell. Absolutely. I'm even talking about Luai. I thought Latrell Mitchell was absolutely ridiculous this season. I thought Latrell Mitchell was ridiculous. And I thought he was relatively hard done by not winning the Wally Lewis medal. But obviously, we know why he didn't. But Latrell Mitchell, every time he touches the ball, I get scared. You know, every time he touches the ball, he looks fantastic. And just looks like he's going to make a break or, or palm off four players. Or he just looks like he's going to make a huge play for the Blues. And usually does make that huge play for the Blues. So absolutely putting him in elite. One of the best, probably the second best player of the series. Arguably the first, but definitely top two. Next up, I believe this is Francis Molo. I don't think that he had a great impact. I don't think he had a great impact. I, I don't think he had a great amount of time. I don't think he had enough time, realistically. But I think that when he was on the field, I don't think he had a fantastic impact as what you'd probably want. I'm going to put him... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put him here. I'm not insulting him in the sense that he's not a good player. I just don't think that the origin scene he's ready for yet. I don't think he's necessarily ready for Origin yet. And it just, it kind of showed where he didn't even really kind of do a great deal in game three either, to be honest. But look, yeah, can be good. A long time ago. But just, yeah, we'll put him in not that great for this series. Okay, next up, we've got Cameron Munster. And, you know, this is also going to go down here. Cameron Munster. Oh, no, you know what? I'll put him... I will put him above Holmes. I'll put him here. I don't think Munster had a good series at all. Obviously, he won game three on his own back last year. But unfortunately, this season, he just wasn't there. You know, he, he spoke a lot and talked a lot, but didn't actually live up to the hype and live up to the expectation that we are grown to expect from Munster. So he definitely goes in the not great category for me. Obviously, he has the every ability to be here. He has every ability to be up there in elite. But obviously this year, not for me, I would put him in, in not great. And due to expectations, you could even put him down here or here. But yeah, he's still 
Yeah, we'll put him there. We'll put him there. Next up, this is Murray, Cameron Murray. I think he did his job. You know, I don't. I wouldn't complain with him. I, I think he did his job. I thought he actually had some good tackles in game three. I thought he was pretty good overall in the series, and you definitely wouldn't be putting him in not that great. I definitely think that uh, he'll be back in 2022, and he's one of the uh, the better players in the competition. So, absolutely did his job. Don't think he had a major ability to shine and, and bring more impact to the game than he could have. But I think that yeah, he's he's definitely in that category. Next up, Joe Offahengawi. I personally don't understand why he was selected. Um, no offense to Joe, but obviously his form is pretty 50-50 when it comes to the Tigers, and the Tigers aren't a great team necessarily. Not even necessarily, just aren't a great team at the moment. I'm not a big fan of Othan Gowie, and I don't really think he had a great deal of impact when he did have his limited minutes. You could put him in not enough game time, but overall, my belief is he won't be back in 2022, and... I, I don't really think it's arguable. We'll see. We'll see. You guys let me on the chat, the comment section, what you think. If you think we'll be back, I don't personally think it. But best of luck to him to prove me wrong. Please, prove me wrong if you feel the need to or you want to obviously get back into Origin because, um, you know, we, we do know you're a big bopper who, who can get some maters going, but unfortunately, it just wasn't your time. All right, Papali'i. I think that he was sorely missed in game one. Sorely missed in game one. Game two, I thought he was probably one of the more aggressive. You know, I'll put him in did his job. Uh, I will say that he was... Look, I thought he was pretty decent last night, though. You know, I'm. he only played the two games this series. I don't think he had a fantastic game two, but he definitely did a decent game three. So you put him in here, game two, but here, game th here probably game three. Uh, so I'll put him here. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. He has... Unbelievable ability to be up in an elite section. But unfortunately, for me, it wasn't really overall his Series 2 because he was out of Game 1, Game 2, didn't have the ability, and 3 was good. So we'll put him there. Next up, we've got Junior Paulo. Now, I'm actually going to put him, a bit of controversy, I'm going to chuck him in the top end of not that great. I don't think he had as much of an impact as you probably would have expected. I think that he's a fantastic player. I think he's one of the best front row forwards in the competition. But I think that Game 1 and Game 2... Game 1, he wasn't exactly the greatest. He came on, I guess he held his own, but Game 2, I guess he held his own too. And then Game 3 was just... He didn't really have anything going. You know, he tried... He tried, but I don't think he did his... I think he did his job. You know what? No bullshit. He did his job. He did his He did his job. I'll put him I'll put him here. You know, I think he did his, he did his job, but it wasn't... It wasn't great. But he still did the job as much as he could. Wasn't bad, per se, but just didn't have that same level of impact. So you can argue top end is not that great or bottom end to do the job, but I will, uh, I will chuck him in bottom end to do the job. Next up, we've got Saifiti. I think we're going to chuck him here as well. I think we're going to chuck him here as well. I, I think that he did his job. I don't think he was anything special, but I think he, he did his job to the best of his ability, and you can't really complain with his effort. You can't really complain with his effort. Didn't have a great deal of game time, but I think that Saifiti definitely goes and do the job. All right, you've got Tarek Sims. I thought he had an absolutely massive amount of impact this uh, series, and I thought that justified that his random selection that no one really expected was successful and he is definitely going in big impact here obviously that game one he was unbelievable game three he still gave it a crack and game two was still quality so absolutely big impact well done Tarek Sims it was fantastic to watch her even as a Queensland fan I didn't even know you had that pass in you in game one righty next up we got Jaden Sewer look has potential not a great series got dropped for a reason and just wasn't the goods I don't know if I want to say won't be back in 2022 or not enough game time. I just don't think he was great. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to put him in here. I'm going to put him... I'll put him at the top because he has has the potential to still be back, obviously, and still be back. But I think that after his series this year, he only got a limited amount of game minutes, but in those minutes, he, he didn't do anything. You know, I, I'm not... I'm not a big fan of what he did in the Origin this year. So I'm going to put him in way back in 2022. He probably, he still has the ability and potential, but yeah, Origin Arena is definitely not his yet. He's definitely not ready just yet. Jakey Trubojevic. Jakey Trubojevic. I'm going to put him in not enough game time. He didn't play an unbelievable amount. I thought that in game one, he was pretty impactful. I'd probably put him in do the job though. I'm going to put him over all the series as not enough game time. He only played limited minutes uh, throughout the series in game one and got rested actually for the final 10, I believe it was. Had a good stint. 
Can't complain, but not enough game time to really get a good read of Jakey Trebojevic. which you could even argue do the job, but you know, we may as well. No, he only played one game. All right, Tom Trebojevic, we all know this is going to happen. We're going to put him there. I personally, for me, personally for me, I actually have it like this. I think Tom Trebojevic was the second best player this series. I think Latrell was actually probably first, but in the same sense, you know what? This is my series. This is my series. So I'm going to take. I'm going to chuck Tom Trebojevic up here. Obviously, he's second best, arguably first is the first in regards to the actual Wally Lewis. So, fantastic player. Did an unbelievable amount. I don't think he had a great deal of impact in Game 3. He started to really pump home in the last eight minutes of Game 3. But he left a little bit too late. I'm going to put him absolutely in second. Could argue first. You can just switch these two around. You know what I mean? Like, you can just switch these two around based on whatever you're thinking at the time. But I'm going to personally put Latrell because I thought he was absolutely fantastic this year. But overall, Tom Boy, which was just surreal. His form right now is just surreal. It's ridiculous. It's a Ben Barber 2012 or a Jared Hayne 2009 kind of season that he's having. Can he get Manly over the line is the question, though. No. Christian Welch, I thought he is probably high-end of the job. I'm going to put him... I'm going to put him high and do the job. Yeah, I'm going to put him high and do the job. I'll put him in the middle. It's not really in order, but it kind of is in the same sense. Christian Welch, I think he absolutely gave it a crack. I don't think he had a big impact in the sense of game-changing ability, but I don't think you really expect that from Christian Welch. He was good. He wasn't great, and he wasn't bad. I think he definitely effectively got what he needed to do done, and and gave it a crack in the same sense. You know, he just kept going and going and going, and, and uh, despite the fact that we were unfortunately on the losing end of this series. He was still probably one of the better Queensland players for me. So I'll put Welsh up there and do the job. Next up, Jack Whiten. I'm going to put him in the not great section. I'm going to put him uh, above coat. No, I'll put him below coats. I think that with Whiten, unfortunately, you know, he is not a 5 8 at origin level for me. I think there's a reason why he's been in centers for a long time, and I believe there's a reason why he's on the bench now, is because Jerome Luai is absolutely the guy there. I think Whiten tried so hard desperately to be that Luai-esque player last night, but it just wasn't to be. He just needs to focus and be himself, and unfortunately, it wasn't his game, and he came off the bench in the first two games, and was okay, but didn't really have any impact at all, and it definitely was a series to forget for Jack Whiten, in my personal opinion. But he definitely will probably get a bench spot next year. He's a fantastic player, Whiten. Alrighty, Isaiah Yeo, I think he did his job. Uh, you can argue big impact. I think he did his job. I'm going to put him here. I think game three is why I put him here. No, you know, I, I think he had a big impact. I think game one and game two is fantastic, especially with his Panthers mates in, in Cleary and Luai. Unfortunately, he didn't have them, and that's why he probably goes down here or even potentially here in game three. But overall, he had a massive impact in regards to the series in the first two games, and he is one of the better locks in the competition. So definitely get excited about seeing more of him. Finally, James Tedesco. Now, I've seen a lot of people actually say that they didn't think that he had a great series, but I would completely disagree with you. And I'm saying I completely disagree with you. I think that he's not above these guys. You know what? I'm going to put him above To'o simply because game one, he didn't really need to do a great deal, but he still did a great deal behind the scenes. Game two, he started to make a bit more impact in the game in regards to like right in your face. He was just so elusive and just still moving around and moving and grooving. He was just such a good player in game two for mine that didn't get the credit that he deserved because of how good the likes of Trebojevic and Luttrell and Luai and Cleary were. And that's why they're above him and he's here. But game three, he was one of their better players for me. I thought that Tedesco was one of their better players. So overall, he had an elite series and I think that Tedesco deserves to be up there above all these other guys. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this list. There is no Mitchell Moses. I would put him in won't be back in 2022. I don't think that Origins his stage. I thought he gave it a crack with some of his kicks and it was okay. But in the same sense, I think overall, man, it's uh, it's a disappointing one for, uh, for, for Mitchell Moses. But you could even put him in not that great, to be honest with you. But he didn't even have a great deal of minutes, but he still played the full game last night. So you, you put him in not great or won't be back in 2022. But if I'm missing any other players, guys, I do apologize. I didn't do this list. If you want to go and do your own list, it's on TM Maker right now. And uh, if you guys want me to do other team makers, then make your team makers and send them to me on Instagram, and I definitely will do a video. Guys, I'm going to jump off for now. I appreciate you as always. Obviously, we post every single day at 5 p.m., well, between 5 and 6 p.m. So hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new around here, ring that notification bell, get that little notification bell, and click it right down below now so you get a notification every time we upload. And obviously, we're streaming every single game this weekend, so get excited. Don't forget BKR Clips, the second channel where we post clips from our streams, the most important parts of the clips. That is where to go. And that's going to do us for today, guys. Live your passion. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do something. Appreciate you guys. Congratulations to New South Wales on the origin. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Soup.